Hi, I'm IDD QD Sound. Let's talk about Reaper. In this video, I want to show you how to find on Alpha's levels using the SWS extensions. Very quickly. Let's go over to Reaper and I'll show you two ways to do this. I have a track in front of me here. We go to the extensions menu and then loudness. And it was at that point that I realized this is just going to take too long if I want to sample different content creators. So April Fools, it's, it's it's just me. So hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials. And today I want to show you another SWS feature called Loudness. And you can get that by going to extensions and going into Loudness. It's a really useful tool that can instantly analyze the LUFs, integrated values, LU, ranges, stuff like that for one file or a bunch of selected files. And it's really easy to use. So on this track, I'm just just going to select all my items. These are masters from my last album. So let's see how I did. With the items selected, I hit analyze items. It'll take a little bit. They start coming in one by one. Just to clarify, these values alone won't tell you if you did a good mastering or not, but they will still reveal some information about your track. And that's it really done. So as you can see, it tells me my integrated LUFS values. It tells me my loudness range. It tells me the true peak values, maximum short term and maximum momentary. Now, if this is the first time you're opening this, you're not seeing all these options so you can just right click on this top bar and you will see all the things that you can have visible and I think by default true peak and stuff like that aren't there if you click on options you get some extra options so you can analyze tracks as well uh, you can use high precision mode which takes longer to analyze and you can also take this option to measure true peak normally it would just say minus infinity with this it will measure the true peak and it will take a little longer to do so so I can right click on this I can go for example go to maximum short term and it will create a time selection at where my maximum short term was. I can also go to true peak, which is right here is my true peak. And you can also go to maximum momentary. And as you can see, this is a lot faster than using something like a loudness meter, because what I can do is go to my monitoring effects and I have the U lean loudness meter. This is free. It will analyze the track in real time, but you do have to play the track through. Whereas with this, it takes a fraction of that time. However, there are limitations with this. The first limitation is if you have any effects on your track or on your your master or on these items, this loudness doesn't analyze those. All it analyzes is the underlying audio file. So if you want to know what your loudness range looks like after your master bus, you actually do have to render. Or if you want to know what the compressor on your item did to its loudness, you have to actually glue your item or render it otherwise for this SWS window to actually show you the change. Another thing that I like to untick by default is this one, clear list when analyzing. This way you keep the list and if you say clear list every time I want to analyze from scratch, it will get rid of all the rest. So because I actually need to commit my changes for this to work, I don't actually use this in the mastering phase, but I think this is really useful to use as a quality control type of thing. Once you have a bunch of finished products, you can come here and compare them. And this is something I mastered on my own because COVID hit as I was recording this album, the mastering engineer I was going to work with could not access her studio anymore. I ended up having to do it myself. I, you know, we're all friends here. I think I pretty much bombed it. First of all, these loudness range are very worrying, especially for tracks one and four. They are under four loudness units in terms of dynamic range, which is not very dynamic. And the integrated values are fine, but really like I didn't do a good job of mastering this album. I think the songwriting was really good. I think the mixing was really good. And then I just kind of ruined all my months of work by doing a subpar mastering. So really, if there's one thing you learned from this video is the loudness meter. And if there's a second thing to learn is to not do everything yourself, get a mastering engineer, you put five months of your life or a year of your life into writing and recording and mixing an album. Don't let your aversion to paying $200 for a mastering to be the thing that makes your album go from yeah to like eh. And now here's where it gets really cool. Now that I have these values, if I want to change them, it's very simple. You can just double click on any of these. You can just manually type in the value that you want. So I want my LU range to be 5.6 here. I just go to the next one, double click 5.6. And now I can use this action, SWSBR adjust loudness of selected items to specified values. So I just select both of them. I run it. It will take a little bit of time. Now they have adjusted those values to what I wanted. Just kidding, April Fool's got ya. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously it's not as easy. Don't get me wrong, Reaper is awesome. It automates a lot of clerical tasks, but there's still a lot of things that need your creative and scientific mind to do correctly. So don't really be looking for quick shortcuts like this and don't believe any tutorials that come out on April 1st. 
that said, apart from that last thing I said, everything else was true about this. So I'm not a monster. I mean, to clarify, it is that easy. You can right click on tracks and go normalize. And here you can normalize to LUFS values or LU values. However, it doesn't actually affect your dynamic range of the track. You can just kind of normalize these, like bring them up or down to a level that you want, but it wouldn't actually fix a bad mastering. But as you can see, you can pretty quickly analyze a bunch of items. By the time you make yourself a cup of coffee, Reaper can really quickly analyze a bunch of sound effects that you're exporting to a library or a bunch of tracks that you're getting mastered. So I think it's a pretty cool tool. I hope you like this video. And if you like the work I do, please donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to Bo, who's donating for the second time. And sorry, Bo, I haven't gotten to do the next mixing feedback Monday with the track you sent me. So, you know, I'll do that as soon as I can. It's been a very busy couple of months and it's going to be a very busy couple of months coming up, but I'll definitely squeeze that in at some point. Thanks to everybody else for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.